Is the Pixel 7a worth the $50 price increase? I've been using it for the past two weeks and today I'm going to answer that question. So let's jump in. Hey, it's Luke here from New Tech Reviews where I review the latest tech to help simplify your purchasing decision. Today, I'll be running through the performance, battery life, camera, and overall software experience for the Pixel 7a, and then answering the question as to whether you should purchase it after the price increase versus the Pixel 6a last year. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video where I'll be sharing one of my favorite cases for the Pixel 7a alongside a screen protector. So make sure you stay as you won't want to miss it. So starting with design, the Pixel 7a comes in at 6.1 inches tall. I must admit I've been using the S23 Ultra and the iPhone 14 Pro Max recently. So I've gotten quite used to using large phones. And as soon as I picked up the 6.1 inch Pixel 7a, it was a bit like a breath of fresh air and it felt so light and easy to use. And using it in one hand was such a breeze compared to those devices. The display is a HDR OLED panel coming in with a resolution of 2400 by 1080 and a PPI of 429. The back of the phone is made of plastic but you wouldn't be able to tell and it does still feel quite premium so it's not a negative in my eyes and most people stick a case on their device anyway. There's two cameras on the back which we'll cover in detail later but the housing on them is the visor and it's made out of metal similar to the last few devices that Google has made in the Pixel lineup. The phone is rated at IP67 water and dust resistant and also comes in four colours. Those are charcoal, snow, sea and coral. I went for the C this year as I fancied using a different colour to the black or white phones that I usually pick up. Moving on to display, as I mentioned earlier, this year's phone comes with a 90Hz panel which is a first in the A series lineup for Google. However, if you do want to use it in 90Hz, for some reason it's disabled out of the box. So make sure you go into settings and switch on the smooth display setting which will enable you to take advantage of the 90Hz panel, otherwise it will be stuck at 60Hz out the box. Moving on to performance, this year Google have put in the Tensor G2 processor which is the same one shared by the Pixel 7 Pro, Pixel 7 and the all new upcoming Pixel Fold which is great that Google's budget device also gets a flagship processor. I've had no problems at any point during the past two weeks with performance, breezing through everyday tasks with no problem at all. However, although the Pixel 7a does share the same Tensor G2 as the Pixel 7 Pro, I do feel that Google might be throttling the performance just slightly because I have found that apps open slightly slower on the Pixel 7a compared to the Pixel 7 Pro and I can't quite think why that is. It could be something to do with the 8GB of RAM, but it shouldn't really affect how quickly an app opens. So there must be something going on which is making it just slightly slower than the 7 Pro. Not slow, just slightly slower. There's dual firing speakers on the Pixel 7a and they get plenty loud when listening to podcasts or music or watching any TV shows or movies. Moving on to battery, for the first time in the A-Series we finally get wireless charging, which for me is a lifesaver because I only charge via my wireless charging station now, which is the Nomad Base One Max on my bedside table. There is a review for that charge on my channel, so go check that out. But as for charging speeds of the Pixel 7a, the wireless charging will be topped at 7.5 watts. So even though it's not fast, at least this year, we get the option. I've seen some people moaning online, but for me, there's nothing to moan about. There's no wireless charging on the device, which is something we didn't have on the A-Series prior to this. However, if you're in a rush and you do need to charge quickly, obviously you want to opt for the USB-C slot down at the bottom and Google will give you 18 watts of charging when you go wired. So not the fastest charging, but it will do the trick and it's quicker than charging at 7.5 watts on the wireless charger. The battery itself comes in at 4,385 milliamps, which for me has made it through the working day just fine. And when I say working day, I mean, I wake up about six and I finish work about five. So after this, when it gets to about 7 p.m., sometimes I find myself having to need to charge the phone, but it does get me through the working day, as I said. But if you are a heavy user, you might struggle to make it to the day. So just something to bear in mind, 
if battery is your number one concern when buying a phone. Moving on to camera, and this year Google have thrown a surprise in actually, and they'll give us a 64 megapixel lens on the main shooter, which is fantastic because you only get a 50 megapixel lens on the Pixel 7 Pro. So their flagship phone actually has less megapixels than their budget phone. But as we already know, megapixels aren't always a full story, and Google has told us that the size of the sensor on the 7a is smaller than the one found in the Pixel 7 Pro. As for the performance of the camera, what can I say, it's a Google phone. You can expect fantastic images, sharp, contrasty, natural looking images, which are always something you'll find on a Pixel phone, and it's no different here with the Pixel 7a. However, I do still find that portrait pictures can be hit or miss, particularly with the over sharpening that Google's been doing on the last couple of phones. It started with the Pixel 6 series and it's still here today with the Pixel 7a. They just seem to overdo the sharpening when processing the picture and it leaves you not a pleasant look sometimes, but for 449 pounds or dollars, it is a very, very good camera and portrait mode is okay. It just needs to tone down the over sharpening on occasions. If you've got children or pets, the Pixel 7a is fantastic for freezing motion. So if they're running around and you're snapping pictures, you should be able to get nice blur free pictures, apart from when the light starts to get a bit dim and some motion blur will set in, same as most of a smartphone. One area that they could still improve on is the night photography. I know this is a mid-range phone, but I do find the images a lot softer and a lot grainier at night. And I always remember Google being a bit better at night sight pictures. And this year some noise and soft images seem to have crept in. I don't know if it's due to the bigger sensor and the higher megapixels, because the higher the megapixels are, the harder it is to capture pictures in low light. But the pictures are good enough to get what you need to get at night. And considering the price, like I said, there's not a real complaint there. It's just something I've noticed coming from last year's device. The ultra wide camera is a fantastic option to have. It can be slightly warped and a bit soft around the edges, but the ultra wide is one of those things that's always good for capturing things like buildings or landscapes or things that are just too big to fit in the main camera. And it's always a versatile option to have on the back of your phone. As for video, oddly, even though I said the pictures were natural looking, I do find video a bit oversaturated, and I'm not sure why that is. It was the same on the Pixel 6 Pro, 7 Pro, and now the 7a. The colors are just oversaturated, but as far as video quality goes, it looks good. You do get 4K 60, which is really good. Video can be a bit grainy, but other than that, thanks to the G2 processor, video is pretty solid, and for the price point, really does the job for capturing your everyday memories. As for software, the Pixel 7a is running Android 13 out of the box, which is obviously the cleanest version of Android you can get today. That comes with three years of software OS updates and five years of security patches. Material U is a really nice software and it gives you a bit more of a personal experience letting you change the colors to tailor for the person using the phone. And I think the software is fantastic. However, what I will say is after using the S23 Ultra, and I'm not comparing the device, just the software, after using that device, Samsung have come a long way with One UI and I do think that One UI and Material UI for me personally are almost now neck and neck and some people will beg to differ, but I've really come to enjoy using One UI after my recent experience with the S23 Ultra. So just something to bear in mind from my personal standpoint. But for today's review, Material UI is fantastic as I said, and Google does throw in their standard software tricks as they usually do. Things like Photo and Blur, Magic Eraser, and the performance benefits that you do get by using stock Android and the smooth animations really help to make the software experience and performance tied in together and offer a really smooth experience. So looking to conclude and answer the question that I asked you at the start of the video, do you feel the Pixel 7a is worth the £50 or $50 increase over last year's Pixel 6a? Short answer is yes. I feel the addition of wireless charging, 90 hertz panel, and the new 64 megapixel lens more than make up for the price increase from last year and still provide fantastic value at 449. This is a phone that I'd happily recommend to any friends or family if they ask which device to buy and even you as a viewer, I would recommend purchasing this device. So at the beginning of the video, I did say I was gonna tell you about a case and screen protector that I've been using. I've just left reviews for these on the channel. So go check out my Rinky cases review where you'll find the Rinky Onyx case, which is my number one case for the Pixel 7a. 
and then go check out my Spigen Temper Glass Screen Protector, which has been on the phone since the day I opened it out of the box. And it is a fantastic, easy screen protector to install, but I'll walk you through the whole thing, so go check that video out. While you're there, hit subscribe, as I'll have some more content coming out for the Pixel 7a, alongside some content for the Pixel Fold that is due to come out later this month. But for today, I want to say a big thank you to you guys for watching to the end. I'm Luke from Luke Tech Reviews. I'll see you next time.